Good day, everyone, and welcome to Lesson 6 in the Ben and Boz Microsoft Excel video tutorial series. I'm Boz. I'm Ben. How you doing today, man? It's a beautiful day in Sartell, Minnesota. It is. We're at Ben's house today. This is the first time we were recording a video at your house. Uh, kind of exciting. We'll see how we do over here. But anyway. Looking forward to it. <laughs> That's right. Definitely. Um, the goals that we're going to get at in this uh, lesson are we are going to understand how to look uh, use the VLOOKUP feature. We're going to understand how to hide and unhide columns and rows. We're going to understand how to tweak with font a little bit, the type, the size, the color, as well as how to use the fill feature. We're going to understand how to find data in a larger data set and then understand how to use one of my favorite features, the RAND between feature. All right, and specifically, you can see we got quite a long list of actions that we're going to learn. Some of the big ones that you should really focus on and hopefully take away from this video. Control F to help you find things in a large data set. VLOOKUPs, one of the two most commonly asked for uh, Excel shortcuts, I would say, from employers. And then the RAM between one's kind of fun. So without further ado, I think we should get into it because we got a lot to cover. Definitely. So this sample one, we just decided we'd start with a more simple set of data, not accounting related, but just a list of the 50 states, populations pulled from Wikipedia. And it's like, what if you want to quickly find the population of a state on the list? So what's if, if, uh, if you couldn't live in Minnesota, Ben, what's another state you might want to live in? North Carolina would be first on the list for me. Sounds so good. Let's if I went down to North Carolina, you could see I could just scroll down and see, oh, North Carolina, population 10,146,000. Okay, I got it. But if this is a really large data set, that's going to be hard to do. And as you can see, we can't see it from just our home page here. So one fast way to look up anything in this data set, in this case states, is that use Control F. So when I hit Control and the F key at the same time, the Find menu comes up. And if I just type in North Carolina here, you can see it takes me right to North Carolina after I hit Enter and then I can see the population that way. So again, not really necessary here. This is just meant to show you how you can use the control F key. It's very useful in large data sets. Yeah, we do do that a lot. And now we're gonna transition into the VLOOKUP uh, that can be even a little bit more handy when you wanna look up some information. So just go ahead and type North Carolina here right now, Ben. And you see Ben in that, you know, as you're following along, do this as well. Type North Carolina in that cell D3, and then in cell E3, we're gonna create this VLOOKUP uh, formula that basically will allow us to put any state into cell D3 and it'll return the population for us. So go ahead. Man. And so there's a number of different ways that we can go through this VLOOKUP. Once you've done it quite a few times, like Boz and I have, the natural tendency is just hit, hit the equals key and then start typing VLOOKUP, and you see it pops up just after the V and the L, and you can select it and go from that way. However, before we show you that one, we're gonna jump in with probably, I guess, a more basic way or a better way for starting. So um, you can open what's called the Excel formula window by hitting the Shift and F3 keys. So Shift and F3, and you see it pops up for me automatically a list of different functions that I've used recently. And VLOOKUP's first just because we we're practicing with it, but for the folks following along at home, that's probably not first. So you kind of see that top bar is shaded, so don't click in it, but it, like if you leave it shaded and now type in VLOOKUP right there, it gets rid of that text that's in there. Only VLOOKUP's there, you hit enter or go, and it brings up the VLOOKUP. And it has some guesses as far as what yep. we might want to be using. In this case, it is VLOOKUP, so I'm gonna hit okay. And then it walks me through all of the different arguments or the different things that I need to include for this to work. So the first thing, lookup value. This is saying, what do I want to look up in my large table? And in this case, we have the state typed in in D3. So you can see I want to look up. I'm just going to click right on D3. And now it's going to look for North Carolina in my table. Yeah. The second argument, table array. That's when it asks me to select. Well, now I know what I'm looking for, but where am I going to look for it? And for that one... I'm gonna click on A2, hold the shift key and the arrow over, and then control and shift to arrow down and highlight the whole thing. And that's my whole table now, A2 to B52, everything you see highlighted here. Column index number, um, this function is saying, okay, I know I'm looking up North Carolina in the table. What do you want me to bring back when I find it? And in this case, the state names are in the first column. The second column contains the population. So column two is what we want because we want to see what the population is. And then the last argument, you can see it's kind of grayed out a little bit. That's an optional one. You don't have to leave it. 
um, your options are either true or false, as it says down here in range lookup. If it's true, that means it's going to look at anything that's close. So if I had a spelling error in North Carolina or something, it might pull it in. If it's false, it's only going to come out if I have an exact match. And I usually use exact matches so when uh, I'm creating VLOOKUPs. Absolutely, I do too. Yep. So I hit false, or right, type in false, hit OK in this case, and next thing you know, you have the population of North Carolina right sure. there. So I like Texas uh, for country music, or I'm a big country music fan, so go ahead and type in Texas right here. Spell it correctly the first time. So Texas, there's its population. Now just misspell it as an example. And then it kind of rejects it because we had that false in there. I, I think the last thing, go ahead and just spell it correctly again, but uh, the last thing we want to show is sometimes it's nice on a spreadsheet to have the relevant information kind of pop visually. So in this spreadsheet right here, we might want to have cells D3 and E3 kind of pop, and we can do that through the fill feature. So Ben, go ahead and highlight just D3 and E3. He's got his cell in one and then just does a shift over key. And now if you go ahead and click on your home uh, tab up top, and then you can go to the fill. And when you look at the fill, it, I think it usually defaults to yellow, and that's fine. Just go ahead and click on it. Um, it now it pops a little bit. You know, if you did want a different, uh, a different color you could have hit the drop down box next to that one and uh and then just picked any other color there but so there you go and as long as we're here um you can also change the font up here where calibri Arial, arrow black whatever you want um you can change the font size you can go bold italics underlined really anything you want to do right up here in the home tab under this font area exactly exactly all right i think we should move on to a little bit more complicated example yeah a little one, this next one is more accounting related and if we if we look here at first uh just look more at the body of the information we have date of the purchase this is kind of an uh, an inventory table so we have date of the purchase units purchased cost per unit and total cost um if you go down to the bottom there's some sum features in there which tell you the total amount of units that we have. Those could be the goods available for sale and then also the total cost for them. So that's all kind of done for you. What we might want to know, however, is, okay, at various levels of units sold and at different inventory costing methods, what would be the cost of goods sold and the ending inventory? Now to create this whole thing is way beyond the scope of these videos because now Ben, you know, you can kind of see it goes from column A, B, C, D, Q. I think you're better <laughs> than that. That's, That's right. Bit, <laughs> that totally. He's a numbers guy, but yep. he can handle the number, uh, the letters as well. Yep. Yep. Totally. So there's something hidden there. All right. So highlight the D through the Q right click and then hit unhide and what's going on there there's a lot behind the scenes that are th that's going to compute the um, ending inventory and cost of goods sold at any of the three possible inventory methods you can look through that on your own time if you want that's beyond the scope of where we need to be what we do want to do however is then go to sell b1 goods available for sale all right so go ahead go ahead to b1 actually there ben all right and do equals and then go link down to B22, There's where we have the good. Down here. Yep, yep. So go down there. Now the unit sold. Let's just make up a unit sold right now. Let's just type in 300. Okay. And we can see now this whole spreadsheet populates. And if you just hover over your cell over to the right, we have the cost of goods sold in an inventory at 300 units sold. All right. Now we go to the inventory method, and let's just type in. Uh, FIFO, F-I-F-O for the inventory method. We'll tweak that in a second. And now for cost of goods sold, what we want to do is let's create a VLOOKUP to pull the cost of goods sold from the right side of the schedule. We want to pull it from column O, but we want it to pull the correct inventory costing method so that we could change the inventory costing method and have the correct cost of goods sold. So go so, slap a VLOOKUP. And so now. for this one, we're going to do it slightly differently than we did on the sample tab because we're more advanced now. So I'm gonna hit the equal sign and then start typing VLOOKUP. And once it pops up for me, I'm gonna hit tab to select it. Then lookup value. Well, I wanna look up what inventory method we're gonna be using. And then to get to the table array, where am I gonna go find it? That's gonna be all the way over here, starting in column N and moving over to P and all the way down. Um, what do I want returned for me? Well, this is cost of goods sold, so I want the second column. And then finally, 
what type of match. I want an exact match, so I arrow down to false, hit tab, close my parentheses, and there you have it. Cost of goods sold under FIFO. And then if now if you do the, do the same thing for ending inventory, and this will show us how we're going to use the third column. So the same equals the VLOOKUP. You've got your open parentheses. You're still looking at the inventory method. You're still hitting comma. You're still going to go select kind of that the, the, the set of answers. But now we're going to, instead of doing a comma two, we're going to do a comma, comma three because we want ending inventory. And then comma false because we still want an exact exact match go ahead and close the parentheses off and we have it there we go so you know we just some final enhancements that we can now make to this one um, we can go ahead and we can hide the stuff that we don't need anymore so, so everything ahead. F through M really we don't use at all do we yeah yeah correct and we can actually go ahead and hide through P because we're trying to cl keep the spreadsheet cleaned up at the end so go all the way through P sure to hide a column just do a control zero control and zero and look at that, all those columns are gone now. They're yep. not cloud enough for view or anything like that. That's right. So um, a, a couple data validation things we can use to clean this up. We can go on to cell B2. Go ahead and hit data, data validation. And then allow, in this time, let's allow a whole number. Okay. Anywhere uh, the between zero. So minimum, just going to type in zero there. Yep. And the maximum, go ahead and click on B1. B1, goods available, 486. Yep, go ahead and click OK on that one. Let's do validation on B3. And why don't you go ahead and talk through this one, how we could allow a list, and you could just type in the list. Sure, so data validation here. Um, we've done this before, but this time we want to just show you a slightly different way to do it. Um, in this case, instead of allowing any value, we're going to just limit it to a list because we only want those three inventory methods. And instead of highlighting or clicking on the sheet like we did last time, here I'm just going to type them. So I'm going to type FIFO, put in a comma, and add a space, and then type LIFO, and then weighted average. And then once I hit OK, now you can see I have a drop down menu, and it's just FIFO, LIFO, or weighted average. I select choose, weighted average, or yeah, select one of the other ones. And, and it updates for me automatically. Yeah. Looks like you built a good spreadsheet. Well, thank you. The, the, the last couple things. Um, let's do a quick, uh, let's use the random number generator on cell B2. I love this one. Um, just to, it's, a, it's a fun way just to, uh, just, just, just to make up a sample number. So let's, let's do equals rand between here. So we do equals rand between open parentheses and then zero, comma, and then go ahead and click on B1. Close parentheses. And, and hit enter. What it, do you think is going to happen here? I think it's going to be a random number between 0 and 486. I hope so. Yeah. Look at that, 329. Yeah. So it's just a way you can kind of test it. Um, you know, now we do have the data validation built in there. Try to hit 500. Or, yeah, if we hit 500 right there, you can see we had the, the data validation so built in works. there. So it works. Yeah, it works. And go ahead and escape out of that one once. And we still have our random number generator in there. And you it, notice it changed. And that'll happen anytime we change something. So if we were to go in inventory method from LIFO to FIFO, yep. you can see our unit sold also changes just randomly. Yeah, it's just kind of a fun one. So, And mm -hmm. the final thing I want to do is maybe we decide we don't need that row one to show up on the spreadsheet. So just like we hit a column before with a control zero, we hide a row with a control nine. Control nine. Yep. There we go. It's gone. That's how we'd hide it. And if we wanted to unhide it again, we could, uh, um, you know, we could kind of click on the two and drag up and then, um, or you could just you could just grab the line right there and drag down. There it goes. So, all right. all right. Well, I think that's all we got for today. Did we cover everything, Buzz? I think we got through the find. We we, we searched. We opened the Excel formula. We used fill and we changed the font around. We hit a column, hit a row, selected a random number, and then some, did some more data validation in there. I think that's a pretty good video. I think so too. All right. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.